All right, so welcome to Eco's The First Continent uh, Starting Footprint Strategies. And so this is the last footprint for the videos. And the footprint we'll be going over is the antelope footprint. Now, let's get started, shall we? Okay. So, let's get started with this one first. You get to place a desert with this one, and you're going to want desert tiles out. Then you get two victory points. You may also replace a water with a desert, and that might be useful to do for sure. I, I would recommend it. And then gain a card and play it. So you're going to gain a card from the deck that doesn't probably have a footprint on it, and then you get to play it. And that could be potentially useful too. But the main reason why you this is a good first one to play is of this card here. You've heard the expression, the lone rhino, correct? If you have, this card makes a lot of sense. So you place a rhino, you gain two victory points, then you gain three victory points if it's not adjacent to any animals. So you get five victory, victory points probably the first time you play this, assuming there's no animals nearby. And then you get a wild symbol. This could potentially give you five victory points every time you play. That could be potentially very useful, for sure. And just because you get to place some rhinos down, that would be pretty fun, just to place some rhinos down, to period. But this is definitely a very useful card. This one over here could potentially also help you out with the rhino strategy by getting another desert out there, for sure. And then it gives you four victory, time, four victory points every time you play it, so it's just as good as this one, actually... It may be potentially better because this one isn't a guarantee with the five. This one's a guarantee with the four at least. But you also get to move one animal in or adjacent to this habitat, one space habitat. So you could potentially move some rhinos around and place another rhino somewhere in a desert by itself again and get some more victory points. So these working in tangent are very useful for sure. And this is a one-time use as well. So you'll definitely want to get some cards out there. So the whole dial strategy, get a card, get a cube, get a card, get a cube, is going to be very helpful with this strategy. So what's a good first card to get? This one right here is the best first card to get because it only requires two waves and one sun element to complete, but it gives you two pebbles. And there are two pebbles on this card, there's a pebble on this card, and there's two pebbles on this card. So it will definitely be very useful, and since you get to echo this four times, you could potentially echo these a whole lot faster than normal, for sure. So you'll definitely want this one first. Now, after you get this card, what's another good footprint uh, card for this footprint? I would recommend this one here, the elephant. And this one does reward you, for a lot of elephants so it would be good to eco this card after this one is long gone because if there's other animals out this decreases the chances of this one being good so this is a good replacement for the rhino so you get to place an elephant you get a victory point which is okay and then you get one sun and wave in any combination per elephant in this community so that will help you out a little bit, complete some other cards, like this one maybe. This one's got a couple suns on it. This one's got a sun and a wave. And so here's another good card you could also get that has a sun and a wave on it that you could potentially eco as well. It would give you a victor point, and it would give you a grass and a rock symbol as well. And then you could put, you know, there's a rock symbol here. And, you know, you'll definitely obviously need another card. But you could probably put the grass symbol back onto this card. So you could potentially, this is pretty useful to work with as well. Now, the reason why you want to get a lot of animals out is there's a predator in this footprint. So if there aren't other players putting out animals, you're going to definitely want to get a few elephants out. Because you're going to want some prey for your predator to eat. But before we go there, there's another card that could potentially be useful to get first. And this one you could use a couple of times. You could choose any animal type and place it following normal standard placement rules. 
and then you would get a wild symbol if it was adjacent to at least three different types of habitat. So there's five different types of habitat. If it was adjacent to at least three of these, you get a wild symbol and it would let you place another animal, which could be potentially helpful with this next card here, the cheetah. Now, this is definitely one of my cool, funnest footprints to play with, all mostly because of this card here and this card here. Now, you do get to play this a couple of times, so it could be potentially give you a lot of victory points for sure. So this cheetah may be placed on a space with other animals. So this breaks the normal placement rule. So normally, you're not allowed to place an animal on a tile that has an animal already on it. But this one lets you put the cheetah down with an animal. So that's really cool. And then you would get four victory points just for playing it. So at least you would get four victory points every time. And then you remove any non-cheetah animals on this space. So if you place this down with a tile that already has an animal on it, well, you remove that animal that has it. Then you move all cheetahs, either zero or one space, and remove any non-cheetah animals on those spaces. So the first time, we're gonna, probably only going to have one cheetah. But that can also be different. Because if you were to play this one first, and you decide to eco this one first, and you place a cheetah, all of them all better for this card here, because now there's two cheetahs instead of one. You have two cheetahs. So the first time you play it, you could potentially be removing a lot of a lot of non-cheetahs for sure. And then you get two extra victory points per animal removed. So if you've got two cheetahs out and you removed three animals potentially, that's two, four, six, plus four, ten points. The next time you play it, you might have more cheetahs down and you might remove some more and get even more victory points that way. So this is definitely a powerhouse card. But like I said, like with the shark and the other cards that are very powerful cards that give out victory points, there are still some cards in the footprints that you're definitely going to probably need to play in order to keep going and win the game. Because this might nece not necessarily, it might put you in the lead, but it probably won't change the game and let you win the game. So, what is another good card to go with next after you've completed the cheetah strategy? This one is, you place a mountain, then you gain two victory points per five victory points you're behind the leader. So if you haven't ecoed this too much and you've already got this out, you could get a few extra points for every five victory points you're behind the person who's in the lead. Which, well, it wouldn't be the player that has the gorilla, mo gorilla most likely. But if you're playing against the player who has uh, that card that gives out the shark, for instance, or the antelopes or um, even the hippos for that matter, one of those three would be potentially be in the lead for sure, and so you could get a few extra points to catch up if you were way behind. And then you get three more points if this was adjacent to another mountain. So assuming another player places a mountain, you could get a few extra points as well with that card. And this can be played four times, so if there's more mountains out, you could get some extra points that way too. And then... There's another card that would be a very good choice as your next card after you've ecoed this at least one time. And that's this one here, unless, of course, another player's been placing mountains. And this one lets you place a mountain, you gain four victory points, and then you give, gain five if adjacent to only one mountain. So as long as this one you place is only adjacent to one other mountain, you get five more victory points. So you could potentially get nine points for every time you play it, and you could play it three times. So these two cards here on their own are really powerful, and you don't even necessarily need to go the cheetah, rhino, well, the rhino you'd have to, but the cheetah and, cheetah and the elephant um, strategy. You could go and skip them and go straight to the mountain strategy, depending on how the game is looking. There isn't a lot of animals out, but there's a ton of mountains. Then going after these first before going for the cheetah and the elephant strategy would be in your best interest. But if there's a lot of animals out, then it would definitely be in your best interest to get this out first, get a cheetah with this, and then play this, eco this card, and get a cheetah there, and start racking up some points that way. So I hope you guys like these videos. Those would definitely be your best interest. There's a couple other cards here, and this one even will give you some victory points perhaps, but these two cards are kind of wonky. They're not very useful unless... Unless you're playing against somebody who's placing a lot of water down, 
this one isn't as useful. And so that's about it. That's about it. So these two cards aren't the best to choose. Unless, of course, like I said, they work very well with how things are going. But these two aren't that great for the footprints. These are definitely the better choices for sure. And so you should definitely try these, th these strategies and avoid these cards at all costs. Especially if you want to have a chance at winning this game. Now, you probably have a favorite footprint you like to play with. But in this game, since you're always randomly getting a footprint... It's always good to know ahead of time what you should do with each of the footprints. Because you might know a footprint really well, but then if you get stuck with a footprint you'd never played before, then you're potentially not going to know what cards are best to be played with, and you'll probably will not win. Or if you do win, you'll be like, how did I win? And that's probably what's going to happen. So I hope you guys liked this, these videos of the card strategies and like, like I said once once I, like I said if you are, are, are an experienced player and you have played this a dozen times then you should definitely go with the alternative way of playing where you don't necessarily start with just one particular footprint you just have a bunch of random cards in reality instead that and that would potentially give you more variety for sure and it would definitely and definitely add more fun to the game especially if you've gotten used to all these strategies but if you've only played this a few times then you probably haven't played with all of the uh, footprints anyway and so this should help you out in future games when you get stuck with a footprint that you don't like or you don't think is as good because like I said that gorilla one is very hard to play with if you get stuck with that one you're not going to be too happy when you see other players like 40 points ahead of you and you're barely on the scoreboard and then you play your gorilla and it doesn't even pan out because you didn't play it in a certain order of cards so I hope you guys like these videos and uh, that's it for now that's it for these this particular strategies videos for this particular game. Goodbye. Have a nice day.